Hello, Tina. Okay, where do you want to start this morning? The bank rate or home sale numbers? Well, let's start with the bank rate because I know that's got everyone uh, listening today. Uh, the bank rate obviously has gone up half a point earlier this week, and that's not much of a surprise. I mean, there was a lot of talk about it being 0.75. Some people were even saying the BOC may increase it by a full point. So I think the half a point has people, uh, you know, a, a little bit at ease. I mean, it's still an increase. It still does increase people's payments if they're on variable. Lines of credits go up. But I think all in all, the messaging around the rate increase is this could be the last increase and we'll be heading into a pause. So that has a lot of people at ease over the last couple of days and, you know, really starting to figure out their options as we head into the new year. So the Bank of Canada raised the rate again to 4.25% seven times this year. What does that mean to the person who is holding a mortgage? Maybe that is up for renewal pretty soon. That's going to be tough. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of anxiety about what's going to happen with renewals. There's a lot of anxiety about people's credit lines and how much is this going to increase their payment. I've heard from, you know, even our buyers whose payments have gone from, say, $1,300 to almost $4,000. Seven rate increases in a year is unprecedented. And the Bank of Canada is now saying that, hey, you know, this, this could be where we end up and it could be the end of the rate hikes. Between a 5 and 6% mortgage is still, it, it's pretty reasonable for those of us that have had homes uh, back in the day and, and been able to uh, see these types of rates before. The rates that we had over the last few years were not rates that would hang around for a long time. They were put into place to get us through a specific issue, which was COVID, and now that uh, that's behind us, hopefully, we're starting to see more normalized rates uh, around the 5 and 6% mark. We also heard from Premier Ford earlier this week where he said he was against Bank of Canada raising interest rates again. So do you feel like perhaps this will be it? I believe so. And inflation is a lagging indicator. So we're going to find out maybe in a month or two months what these rate hikes have done to that uh, the inflation rate. And I think as it starts to come down, you're probably going to see some activity from the Bank of Canada to either pause the rate increases or maybe even drop it a quarter point uh, in order to get the market going again, get the economy going again. I, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with the economy right now. You're still seeing people out there spending. And, you know, we'll look at the housing numbers uh, in a minute. But, uh, you know, the... Everything continues, and, and the housing market is just one of the elements that goes into the inflation. We've got gas prices, supply chain, food prices. Everything's contributing to inflation, and as the supply chain starts to fix itself, you're going to start to see some relief for the inflation rate, and that will in turn get the economy going again. And what do you think the rate hike, what is the impact on those thinking about making a home purchase? The rate hike always does affect people's decisions. I mean, it does knock them down a notch. If they would have been able to afford a detached home, they may be looking at semis now or townhouses or condos. So it does affect the affordability factor. And also, it does stress people out. If you're going from having to pay $1,500 $1,500 for your mortgage or $2,500 for your mortgage, and now all of a sudden you're paying $3,000 or $4,000 for your mortgage. That's a lot of money, and, and you have to have that money in order to make that decision. So it could affect people's decisions in terms of what they're buying or where they're buying. Uh, you know, you drive till you qualify. So it may push people out further and further away from the GTA just in order to get them into a home. Talking about getting into a home, what can you tell us about the home sale numbers? The numbers came out, uh, again, earlier this week, and we're looking at 12,280 sales for York Region year-to-date. Where are we going to end up? We're probably going to end up close to 13,000 sales for 2022, Tina. And comparing that to last year, it's going to be about a 42% decline in sales. And and that's that's a huge chunk. I mean, we're coming off a record-breaking year. So even if you take out 20% to say, 
hey, that was a record year. We're not going to do that. We're still short about 20% in terms of volume. Okay, so inventory is still an issue. Are there areas in York Region hotter than others? Inventory is still an issue right across the region. Now, okay. it's an issue compared to problems that we had last year where we had one month of inventory. So last year, at the end of the year, Tina, we only had 612 homes for sale. This year, it seems like we have so much more inventory, but we have 2,022 homes for sale year to date. And uh, sorry, 2013 homes for sale year to date. And that's 1.9 months of inventory, which is still about half of where we need to be in order to help with the affordability factor. As far as areas that are hotter than the other, I mean, right now, King is a little bit quiet. And that's understandable because the price points there are a lot higher. But you're looking at Markham, Newmarket, Richmond Hill, they continue to build momentum as, as we move forward. It's been a quiet October, November, uh, even the start of December has been a little bit quieter, but they had phenomenal starts to the year. So when we look at the numbers year to date, they're not that bad. And if we look at York Region as a whole in terms of average price, we're sitting at $1.395 million, and that's 8% higher than the $1.29 million that we ended 2021 at. So price continues to climb, inventory is still low, and although sales are down, the fact that there's low inventory and there's still people competing for the good houses, and also the fact that inventory is down 16% from last year. If you look at the year-to-date totals for new listings that came on in 2021, we had 31,385 listings come on. In 2022, we've only had 26,345 people list their homes. They're waiting because there's no catalyst for them to give their home away at a lower price. So they're waiting for market conditions to get better. As we see with uh, the units, that's uh, too full because we've got people waiting to lift, so there's less on the market. And then we've got people waiting to buy, so there's less sales. So once the dust settles after this latest rate increase, we're going to start to see people come off the fence. Okay, so the biggest takeaways from the two big stories this week, the rate hike and the home sale numbers, what do you want to tell our listeners right now? The rate hike of half a point has been uh, you know, pretty much anticipated right across the country. And, and we knew it was coming. We knew there was going to be another rate hike. Uh, it, there, was, there was different schools of thought. Was it going to be 0.75? Was it going to be 1%? Was it going to be 0.25? But I think the majority of people would have said it's going to be half a percent. And when you're expecting it, it's not as big of a shock as if they would have gone with a 0.75 or 1% rate hike right now. And even if they would have gone with a quarter point, I think that would have really excited people to say, okay, it's not that bad. But half a point, I think, you know, the status quo will remain for a few weeks because people were expecting it. They were planning around it. And now we start moving forward. As far as the numbers, sales are down. And there's no two ways to look at that. Unit sales are down and they're going to be down drastically over last year. When you're putting it into perspective, last year was a record year. But prices are up and they were up 8%. So the longer you wait, the more buying power you're giving away, not only with prices increasing, but also with the rate increasing. So if you're a buyer, there's a window of opportunity here right now before everyone gets into the market for you to look and try and find the house that you want and get into it. Considering the current economic climate, do you think buyers and sellers are thinking, okay, that's it, let's get on with it already, let's hit 2023? I think... Pent-up demand is going to be a huge factor as we move into the spring of 2023. And, and we've seen this before. We've seen this in 2008, 2009. We've seen this in 2017, where pent-up demand fuels the market, and it starts earlier than anticipated. So I don't think we're going to be waiting until March or April for the market to kick off. I think it's going to be a late January thing, and that's why I was saying there's, there's a window of opportunity here for buyers to capitalize while other buyers are still sitting on the fence. So if you're ready to go, this is a good time to be out there and looking and trying to find that right home. As a reminder, if you have questions for On The Market, hit send anytime to info at 1059theregion.com. But Asif, if our listeners prefer to contact you directly, how can they do that? Okay, they can always reach me by phone, 416-985-CON. That's 416 985 
And if you missed any part of our show, go to 1059theregion.com or wherever you get your favorite podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible. I'm Tina Cortez. Thank you for listening. Need to connect with Asif Khan from REMAX Prime Properties? Call him, 416-985-Khan. That's 416-985-5426. Or email asif at thehomeshop.ca.